Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Moore. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill Wendell. Hi, everybody. Nice to be with you again. And I don't think there's a living soul amongst us who at one time or another hasn't dreamed of winning a contest. You know, one of those things where you write 25 words or less and they send you a million dollars. Well, it turns out that there's more to it and you stand a lot better chance if you go to school and learn about it. And we've got a contestant who can tell you all about that as soon as we meet our prize-winning panel here on Tell the Truth. Peggy Pass. <laughs> Bill Cullins. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. And Gene Shelley. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Has anybody on the panel ever won anything in a contest? I won a prize for being the smartest girl in the fifth grade. Oh, boy. Oh, that's yeah, she was in the 12th grade wow. at the time. <laughs> you know what my prize was? What was your prize? A boy a in the sixth grade. <laughs> The Evils of Divorce. <laughs> You're kidding. No, I went to Catholic school and the pastor wrote the book and that was my prize. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, let's, there's, there's more to this than meets the eye. Let us meet our contest expert. <laughs> Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Annette Mintz. Number two. My name is Annette Mintz. Number three. My name is Annette Mintz. And here is the story of Annette Mintz and her winning ways. It says, I, Annette Mintz, have helped people win $100 shopping sprees and $500 worth of furniture. And these are just some of the prizes won by my pupils in my class on contest winning. Everyone who takes my class is guaranteed to be a winner. All they have to do is follow my advice in how to prepare and submit contest entries and how to exercise their own originality and creativity. My credentials are pretty solid. I myself have won a trip to Europe, $10,000, and a color television set. Naturally, most of my contesting pupils are women, but I do teach a few men. However, I must confess that many men drop out of the class when they discover that contesting is really very hard work. Signed, Annette Mintz. <laughs> and while the panel tries to think up some questions, hopefully of 25 words or less, <laughs> we'll have a few commercials of about 6,000 words each. Well, now we have three very bright ladies over here, all saying that they are Annette Mintz who teaches how to win contests and has been a big winner herself. Uh, let's start with Bill Cullen, please. I find this very interesting because I've heard that there are a group of people uh, who really excel in winning contests. I don't mean a, an organized group, but there are a certain number of them. Number one, uh, how many contests have you entered in your life? I enter on an average of around 10 a month, mm -hmm. so that's maybe close to 100 a year, and I've been doing this for about nine years. So that's nine? <laughs> 900, 900. Now, in, in the 900, let's say 1,000 round entries that uh, you've sent in, how many times have you won? I win... Even uh, little things. Yeah, little, oh, I win something once a month, twice a month. You Every actually month. win that regularly? Yes. Uh, number, number three, I'll go to you. Is this school you operate, is it a school where people come and to class or is it a correspondence school? It's where they come to class. Uh, number two, how many students do you have? In my school, I have about uh, 15 per class and two classes a week. And where is your school number two? In Miami, Florida. Uh, how many, I'll stay with number two, how many, uh, uh, how much does it cost to enter this? It's $20 and you come uh, for two hours an evening. Number one, a week. number one. 
<laughs> Sorry, Bill. Kitty Carlisle's up. Uh, number one, uh, do you break even on this? Because it costs money to enter those contests. Oh, yes. Uh, the, the law of percentages, you, you lose more than you win, but uh, you don't usually come out the loser, and there's an awful lot of fun involved with it, too. You have to have that spirit. Thank you. Number two, you do it for fun, then, more than anything else, because you really aren't breaking even financially. Right, and you educate people. It's an education in itself. You're teaching people good English and grammar. Thank you. Number three, where is your school? At Casper College. I have a class at uh, the uh, adult night school in where is Casper, that? Wyoming. It's oh. a junior college. And how much does it cost to join your school? $20 for the course, 10 weeks. And how much have you won? I have won. Uh, I mean, on, on an, an average. average yeah. On an average of. Uh, Oh, one or two a month. Also. Mm -hmm. And number two, how did you get on to teaching this to people? It was uh, handed down through the family. My father founded the company about uh, 20 years ago. Ah, and yours, number three? How did... Uh, yeah, how did you start, start. teaching? Um, I was just interested in it from friends of mine who had won contests, and I thought it would be great fun, and uh, I did have some experience in the teaching. So Thank you, and that's going to take us to Gene, please. Thanks. Uh, number two, um, you said when Gary read your statement that everyone who takes my class is guaranteed to be a winner. Suppose everybody in your class enters the same contest. What happens? Well, you'll only generally have uh, maybe 20 winners. It depends on the contest. Number three, um, how do you find where these contests are? I mean, I walk around the streets a lot. I don't see a lot of contests posted anywhere. What kind of contests are these? That is one of the things that is helpful in the course. Um, I mean, for $20, have, you'll tell me? For $20, I'll tell you. No, there is a um, bulletin that comes out monthly, contest bulletin, that is very good. And it tells you where all the contests in America tells are? You, no, not all of them, but it does tell oh. you the current ones. Huh. And um, old grocery stores have uh, ads for them, coupons there. Oh, uh, I had a good question, too. Uh, Darn it. I'm sorry, <laughs> Gee, We're going down to Peggy. Mrs. Mintz, number one, uh, could you make a living out of this if you didn't teach it? No. Okay. Uh, now, Mrs. Mintz, number one, if you want a trip to Europe, could you sell that trip to Europe and have somebody else take it? Are they transferable? It, it depends on the particular rules of that particular contest. Sometimes they are, but most often they're not. Thank you. Number three, do you have closets full of products that you've won, like two years of uh, soap and 7,000 years of paper products, you know? Yes, there are uh, many of those uh, kind of prizes. And you, and you do get uh, some prizes that uh, are not too practical. And you, which you can give them away for Christmas. But you could give them away for Christmas. To somebody you didn't like. Especially cosmetic ones are very good. Oh, yes, <laughs> fine. Now, um, now, number two, it always says a reasonable facsimile. You send in this wrapper or a reasonable facsimile. Well, how reasonable does the facsimile have to be? I couldn't do a reasonable facsimile. Therefore, I'd be out of the contest business just, you know, for sadness you reasons. Know, all you have to do is take a uh, three by five piece of paper, you know, like an index card, and just write, like, for instance, a soap product like Lux. And just send that in, and that's an uh, agreeable. Oh. I try washing with it. And there we go. The bell rang. This particular contest is on its way to the wire. Make up your minds. Cast your ballots. The audience and I'll look them over. It's number one, or it's number two, or it's number three. And according to our contest, we pay fifty dollars for each wrong guess. We pay five hundred dollars if the panel comes up with no correct answers. And Bill Cullen starts. Gee, it's difficult because, uh, you know, they all could be. But I don't know, just talking to number, I know a little bit about contests, having been on the other end of them, the mm -hmm. pre presentation of my whole life practically. Number one looks like uh, the, the makeup of all the winners I've ever had, sort of the <laughs> average of all those winners. So I voted for number one. She has that confidence. Educated guess. Yes. You've got a one, Shaw. I mean, no. Well, that's funny. I feel just the opposite. I think they all are frightfully good, and I bet they could teach you, even somebody like me to win one. But I think number three looks like that kind of a teacher. From Casper, Colorado. We yeah. got one and it's three. Gene Shalit? Well, I decided Casper, Wyoming was it, and I also decided number one was it, and you know that I voted for number two. <laughs> <laughs> So I like that Lux bit. Everybody's got one, and the majority vote comes from Peggy, please. Well, you see, Mrs. Mintz, number one, lives in Florida, and the weather's terrific in Florida all year round, so you're busy walking up and down the boardwalk, stuff like that. But now, number three, Mrs. Mintz, the scourge of the contest, lives in Casper, Wyoming, and the winters are terrible there. So you fill out, make reasonable facsimiles, and become a winner. 
All I right. mean, what are you else gonna do in Cat no, Wyoming I, I home agree. There you go. You'd be surprised what goes on. I've been. <laughs> anyway, that's the way our votes filled out, and the, so will the real. And at Mintz, please stand up. Oh. Oh. A great team you got with you, Mrs. Mintz. Let's find out about number two. What is your real name, please, and what do you do? My name is Sharon Ann Smith, and I'm from Miami, Florida, and I'm in promotional advertising. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> number three, we'd like to know about you. I'm a housewife. My husband's a retired Army officer. What's your name? Uh -huh. Catherine Gaither. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, we didn't, we didn't get you. My name is Catherine Gaither. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, Annette, it's been a joy talking to you. Good luck on your next 900 contests. Thank you. <laughs> Hope they come out as well as they have in the past. And thank, thank you, you also, imposters. <laughs>
In, in miles? Yes, sir. It depends whether you mean river miles or map miles or... Well, when you, you walk are. the entire length of the Grand Canyon in your uninterrupted oh, journey. The way the feet go? Well, yeah. 300, 400 miles. Uh, number, number two, how long, how long did a walk like that take you? It took me about two months. Uh, number, number two, you mentioned that man is the greatest... Thank you, Bill. Let's go to Kitty Carlisle. Thank you. Number two, do you, did you watch the animals that we saw on the monitor? Yes. You remember the, the second to last one who looked like rather an elongated fox? Yes. What was that? Uh, that was a jackal. Oh. And number one, what was the last one that had such a funny crest and strange things on his head? That was a rhinoceros. A what? A rhinoceros. Uh, do you mean the last? Uh... Yeah, the last one. Oh, that was um, a high... Um... I'm not sure that they could see no. the Oh, I see. There. All right. Sorry, OK. No. Number three, is it true that the Maasai, uh, that tribe that you were talking about, live on drinking the cow's blood through a straw mixed with milk? Uh, today, no. Traditionally, yes. Number two, what do they live on now? They live on, um, on wheat, which they, which they grow now, unfortunately, and, and they also live on milk. I see. Number three, is it absolutely, are they the tallest ones? The, the, the Maasai, are they the very tall ones? No. The, the, those are the Watutsis. And finally, Jean Shalit comes Finally, in. let's see if there's any question that hasn't conceivably been asked here. Where is Africa? Where is Africa? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> name one letter in Africa that doesn't repeat itself. <laughs> number three. Um, <laughs> number three, you great walker, you. Where do you buy your shoes? <laughs> um, at a store in Berkeley. Wonderful. <laughs> Number one, sir, how long do you say uh, Grand Canyon is on the walk that you are alleged to have made? Uh, close to 400 miles, Clo I'd say. And how long did it take you to walk the 400 miles, Number one? Um, close to two months. Two months it took you to walk 400 months. miles, stopping at McDonald's along the way. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. The questioning <laughs> is up. And uh, so now we must make up our minds, or at least they must, and they must mark their ballots Thank for you. Number one. Or for number two, or for number three. All the usual penalties will apply. And uh, Peggy, I think you went first on that. I'm I, sure I you did. First. I'm not sure anymore. But number one, the difference between Gray's Gazelle and Thompson's Gazelle is not the size, it's the markings, as uh, I thought. And number two said that the lions didn't sleep in the trees, but they do at Lake Manyar in Tanzania. But number three, the smallest gazelle is a dick dick, <laughs> unless you don't count that as a d gazelle. So, I, but I voted for you anyway. But the, All righty, we'll get that straightened out. Uh, we've <laughs> got a three show on, and let's go, let's go to Bill Cullen. Well, number two said lions don't sleep in trees, and Peggy said they do, but it's very possible that number two never happened to be passing by when a lion was asleep in the trees. <laughs> because those lions don't sleep when people are walking up and down outside their bedroom. I voted for number hmm? And so we've got, who'd you vote for, Bill? I can't see from here. You got a two uh, show. The lion I voted for, yes. No, number two. So, we got a number two vote, and uh, what do you say, Kate? Well, I wish I knew the answers to all of Peggy's marvelous questions, which I don't. Uh, so I didn't know about the dick dick. I thought that was a bird. Oh, that's a divvy divvy bird. I How voted for number three. <laughs> a divvy divvy I don't believe what any of you are talking about. We've got a <laughs> pair of threes and one two and Jean Charlotte coming out. All I know is that if, <laughs> if you are ever over there and you say a divvy divvy bird, I'm not voting for you. <laughs> I am voting for number three, however. <laughs> All right, that's the way it goes. The majority is on number three. Will the real Colin Fletcher please, sir, stand up? Oh, my God. Oh, I can't. No! <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. We'll be back to you in a moment. Number one, tell us about yourself. What's your name? What do you do? My name is Luke Wims. I'm a member of the United States Merchant Marine. Hey, great outfit. <laughs> Number two, uh, what is your real name? What do you do? My name is Clive Greaves. I'm the national sales manager for Booth's High and Dry Gin. Oh. Our trademark happens to be a red lion, which never goes to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fletcher, will you straighten out our miscasts in so far as possible? A dick dick is, I believe, not a gazelle. No, a, a dick dick is an antelope, but not a gazelle. And actually, a Sunni is a little smaller than a dick dick, though I agree it's, you know, six one, half a dozen of another. 
I must say, have, having traveled some in that part of the world, not very much, that the Mara is not the most spectacular, but it is certainly the most pleasing in some way. It, uh, it has an air about it. It has a gentleness that the rest of the country doesn't have. It, it, there's a richness to it, and animals and the scenery and everything. Thank you, Thank you Colin Fletcher, very much. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. I remember, this sounds like country dropping, but I remember in, in, in Africa, in, in the Mara, and I had not yet seen a really, one of the big five, that's elephant, leopard, or whatever, you know, we made our camp for the first night, and I walked out the door in the morning, I gotta be very careful how I say this, I walked out of the door, and there in front of my tent mm -hmm. was strong evidence that a real elephant had been there. <laughs> and I stared at it and I was so pleased because I had never seen a, a non-union one of those. And, and, I was so, and, and my wife said, if you're so entranced, why don't you have it gift wrapped and take it home? And, well, in any event, it was a very thrilling experience and I'll see you again. <laughs> This is Bill Wendell speaking for To Tell the Truth, a Mark Woodson, Bill Tatman production.